Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special bonus episode tonight. I am your host, Kimberly. You guys know me from this Fat Girl Life podcast, from the Rope of Hope podcast, and from Big Beautiful Badasses podcast. In honor of Pride Month, I am doing bonus episodes all month. I am a very proud ally of the LGBTQ plus community, and I want to show support. And one of the best ways I know how to do that is to try to help bring awareness. So that is what these episodes are about. I have amazing guests who are coming on and graciously sharing their stories to bring awareness, to bring comfort, to bring hope, to bring inspiration. And tonight we are joined by Kat, who is one of those amazing guests. Kat, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I'm happy to be here. It's uh, actually kind of fun for me too. Well, why don't you tell everybody just a little bit about yourself? So I'm Kat. I actually am a current senior at Florida State University. I study both studio art and political science, um, art because I love it, so, political science, because um, law and activism are what I'm passionate about. I am fortunate to have my college paid for, so I chose to major in two things, because why not? Um, but I actually, um, I identify as a lesbian, and I use they and non-binary and use they, them pronouns. Um, there is always, of course, a debate on whether or not lesbians can be non-binary. Um, and we're not going to get into that one today just because it's a big, it's a big thing with a lot of opinions. Um, but I grew up in the Jewish community in the synagogue. Um, my father is a rabbi, still currently is a rabbi. Uh, I have family that lives in Israel, actually just outside of Jerusalem. So my entire family is Jewish. Um, and it's just been a pretty interesting thing for me to be the non-binary lesbian daughter of a rabbi, um, when within a major portion of the Jewish community, it is not, uh, it's not okay to be gay. So, and let's just kind of jump right on in. Um, and of course, I want you to share as much or as little as you are comfortable with. I know we kind of discussed that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So at what age? did you realize? So, so I was 12. Um, I, I, I kissed this girl named Julia. And as, as um, like hopeless romantic as this is going to sound, when I kissed the specific girl, it was like fireworks erupted in, in my body. And I had kissed boys before that. And never felt that way. And then I was at, it was really at that specific moment that I was kind of like, huh, maybe I'm not straight. Um, I played around with the bi label for a while. Um, just because for me, it became a journey of reconciling my sexuality with my faith. Um, I still, um, I, I don't go to synagogue anymore just because there isn't really one in my city that I particularly feel comfortable at, but I still actively follow Jewish customs. Um, I keep mostly kosher. Um, I, I do enjoy bacon and pepperoni pizza just a little too much. So I will break kosher for that. Um, but from like, I played, I really played around with the bi label for a long time because it came down to reconciling my sexuality with my faith in that I had been taught for 12 years of my life that it's not, it's not okay to be gay. You can't be gay and, and believe in God. You cannot be gay and be Jewish. Um, I've obviously, uh, since changed that opinion, but so I played around with the bi label for a really, really long time. And then when I was six, and I really, and even in that time period, I wasn't, I hadn't really come out to myself even really yet in that I was still very much, boys are okay. I really like kissing girls though. That was really, so I really hadn't even come out to myself yet. And I, I feel talking about the journey and me going from bi to lesbian is one that I kind of don't mention a lot because I hate to play into this discord that bi people just eventually choose a side. When for me, it was like a stepping stone because I was still reconciling my faith with my sexuality. But at about 15, and I actually, 
in my opinion, this is like the most integral part of my coming out story. And I, I still talk to this guy, but I did, um, Florida is really, really great. We do have this, they have this wonderful program called dual enrollment where I can, I took college classes at my local community college while I was in high school, instead of taking high school level courses, it was fantastic. It was a great program. I got a year of college out of the way for before I even graduated high school, but I had some really great friends there. One of them, uh, his name is Tashim. We're still really great friends. Um, I've since talked to him about this, but um, in our student union, we had this like kind of like like pit ish. We called it the pit, but it was like this big seating area we would all hang out in in between classes. And I was sitting with him one day, and he was asking me questions about like you know how I would perceive a relationship if I had like a boyfriend because he like we had a mutual friend um who was a guy that I dated for a little bit when I was still on that like I'm just by phase of my life and I hate to call it a phase but it really for me it was a phase being by was a phase for me because I was still reconciling my sexuality with my faith but he started asking me like questions and I just I, I got really quiet I'm like well I don't know and then like it was at that moment I just eventually I just brought it out I don't like men and it was at that moment that I really came out to myself. That was the first time I ever was like, absolutely do not like men. And so that was like really the pivotal moment. And that, and when I came out to myself it was really about 15, 16, um, sitting there with Tashim. So after that moment, is did you approach your friends? Did you approach your family? How did that journey look? So, after that moment, I mean, I kind of felt bad for the kid um, that I had dated previously because that's how we found out that I was gay. I kind of felt bad. <laughs> I was like, I wish I could have told because I wasn't expecting to say it. It was a complete like my filter absolutely just just didn't wasn't there anymore. So I, I kind of felt bad for him in that um, he had to find out that way instead of, you know, me telling him privately. Um but uh, so at that point, I came out to a couple really, really close friends and then um, and my brother. I have an older brother. He's 24. Um, my parents, however, did not find out until August of 2000 of this past year, July, August of this past year. Um, I. I was uh, stupid and left my Facebook um, logged into my mother's computer one day. And my mother, instead of, you know, having boundaries and just logging out, decided to snoop through it. Cause you know, we love that. Um, and she, that's how she found that I was gay was snooping through my Facebook, which in my opinion is a, is a massive breach of boundaries, but it's a whole other conversation. Um, and that was, it was an interesting conversation um, because they're not okay with the fact that I'm gay. I actually don't live at home anymore because they're not okay with the fact that I'm gay. Um, they were always like, well, it's not an issue that you're gay just as long as you don't act on it. That was their, but to me, that's not them being okay with the fact that I'm gay in any sense. And the contradiction in terms. Exactly. Um, and so it came and then I started dating my partner. Um, actually yesterday, uh, June 10th was our three months. We officially did three months yesterday. Um, we've known each other longer than that. Um, but we've been officially together three months. Um, it was when I started dating my partner that things got really tense with my family because now it wasn't a, she just, they just think they're gay. Um, they're actually in a relationship. And so that was like the pivotal moment in my family and how things kind of played out in my own family dynamic because it was no longer, a, excuse me, it was no longer a, well, maybe she's not, maybe they won't be gay. Maybe it's just a phase. Now it's like a, huh, this is not a phase. Like they're not, we're not getting them to come back from this in their eyes at least. So at this point now, because of you stepping into your truth mm -hmm. is that relationship no more it's strained right now i'm choosing like my i will say that my father the one who is the rabbi is 
much better about it than my mother in that does he like the fact that I'm in a relationship with my partner? No, he's not okay with it. But he does not let that affect how he treats me as a human being, which I can I can give him credit for that. He's not, he hasn't, you know, had made any snide comments about my relationship. He hasn't, he just has a very firm, I can't do this. I need you not to ask this of me stance in terms of like, they, they will said they won't show up when I get married. They don't want to meet my partner, all of that. And so while he has had that very strong stance in that regard that I do think is unfair. Um, and in my opinion, very unchrist like I mean, how can you refuse? Like I can I can totally get behind him not being okay with it and even him wanting me to keep it very, very G rated around my younger siblings. Like because you know what? His house, his policies. But I do think that his stance in that regard is very unfair. My mother, however, does make snide comments and so I have a couple like loose ends at work to tie up with her. Um, I, we worked together for a bit. I'm of course since left, but I will probably not speak to her past for a bit past once, once those like loose ends are tied just because I can handle the, we're not okay with this. It's the snide comments and those things that I'm like, okay, not, no, we're not doing that. So knowing that you don't have that traditional mother-daughter bond or father-daughter bond, do you, have you adopted another family basically? Um, so I was actually adopted myself. Um, the parents that I live with are not my biological ones. I was adopted at the age of three out of Miami-Dade County here in Florida. Um, so... Um, I did have a relationship with my birth mother and that her and my adopted mother were best friends in high school. So she basically asked my adopted mother to take me. Um, but she, she died when I was 14, unfortunately. Um, granted she would, I, I think this is kind of funny. She always wanted either my brother or I to be gay. <laughs> She's always like, I always wanted a gay kid. Um, so I think it's hysterical that I, she always thought it'd be my brother. It ended up being me. Um, she always thought, thought my brother would be the gay one. It's me. But uh, she, uh, unfortunately, she, she died when I was 14. But um, I do have really, like my aunt is really fantastic um, and really taking on that like, pseudo mother role. I have really great um, family friends who have known me for a very, very long time who have really stepped in and taken that pseudo mother role from her actually. Yes. Well, let me step to the plate. We've already discussed, you know, you are the same age as my daughter. I could use another kid. <laughs> Welcome to the family. I'll set an extra plate at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I'll set two. Bring your partner. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's gonna my my family's Thanksgiving is gonna be kind of interesting this year. Um, mostly because I did the all of the cooking for the past four years, and now I'm not showing up, so I don't know who's gonna do it anymore. <laughs> well, oh yeah, I throw down. I throw down Thanksgiving. Oh, me it too. Is, I do the collard greens. I do all of it. I my Thanksgiving mm -hmm. cooking starts the Tuesday before. My list making starts in September. <laughs> it's so bad. I, because uh, my father is unfortunately gluten free and dairy free. So I have to like, kind of like my Thanksgiving money kind of doubles in that I do like a gluten free version for him. And then like a, a regular version for everybody else. And while um, I don't really need it to anymore, I do know how to make a good vegan pumpkin pie with coconut milk instead of dairy Ooh. milk. Um, if you ever need to bake dairy free, coconut is better than any of the nut milks because it doesn't have a flavor to it. Okay. Good to know. So, fun fact, cook with coconut milk. <laughs> it's my favorite. So going through this journey, mm -hmm. what has been the hardest part? I really think the hardest part um, was really feeling like I lost a second mom. 
Because, you know, I lost the first one partly because I was adopted and partly because she's dead. <laughs> you know, I can't revive a dead person. As cool as that would be, can't revive dead people. And then to, and then I, I really think this one though hit a little harder because like she chose to take me. Like she didn't have to 18 years ago. Cause I, I've, um, my adoption was finalized 18 years ago, um, back in May, it would have been 18 years. Um, cause it was, uh, March, May 19th of 2003 that my adoption was finalized. Um, so it was like, it was more of, I think it was harder the second time around because, you know, she chose to take me. She didn't have to. And then it was like that losing that mom again, essentially. Okay. That I think was the hardest part. On the flip side, what's been the best part? Finally feeling like I can breathe. Um, I, because my father was a member of clergy, appearances were everything. I mean, appearances were everything everything my brother and i did especially because he was the head of the synagogue was a reflection on him and so you know i couldn't pierce my ears without having without people having any opinion about it or cut my hair or dye it a fun color just because i wanted to my father didn't care and he he always tried to tell me you know people aren't judging you you know no one's looking at you and I finally, my, and this is the one time my mother and I, my mother really came and had my back. She was like, um, she's like, Josh, if you think people aren't looking at all of us and judging us and turning us into a reflection of you, you're naive because it just, it happens when you're, when your leadership in any capacity, how your familial appearance, the appearance of your family members directly reflects on you. And so not having, cause I don't attend the synagogue anymore on purpose. I got tired of, I got tired of the whispers. Um, cause I mean, I have tattoos. Um, tattoos are very taboo in Judaism. I have like seven. They're very taboo in Judaism to have tattoos. Um, I like them. My father, was he a huge fan? No, but does he really care? Also no, but it was, it's that finally feeling like I can breathe because it's, it's the, you know what? The entire cat's out of the bag. People know, and you know what? Fuck them at this point. And so it's that now that I finally feel like I can breathe is honestly been the best part. So for anybody who is watching or will watch in the future this episode and they are struggling mm -hmm. in that area of really embracing who they are what words of advice would you have for them baby steps are always important um your journey is yours alone um you there there's no there's no one formula for what's going to work for everybody and really no one formula of what might work for you you may you may come out to somebody who you think is going to have a really negative reaction and they, they completely uh, usurp your expectations and are wonderful about it. So baby steps are really important and go in, start your journey when you're ready. Don't let anybody pressure you. Um, I had a lot of people tell me that I should just come out to my parents. Like, you know what? They're, they're not going to care. They're not going to kick you out of the house. Um, there's a reason I don't live at home anymore. And it wasn't exactly a choice. Um, and my brother being one of those people included, he's like, they're, they're never going to kick you out. And while they didn't technically kick me out, it was one of those kind of like you need to find somewhere else. We're not going to kick you out, but you should start looking um, type of situations. Um, so do it when it's safe for you because you never know. And baby steps, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to come out to everybody all at once. If just your best friend is who you're comfortable with knowing, start there. And then, you know, expand your little circle. Well, Kat, I'm so grateful that you came on the show, that you responded to the post that I made and you 
We're so open to sharing your story. I think it is so impactful. My offer is legit. If you need a mom figure, you've got me on Facebook. Reach out. And that goes for anybody who just needs someone to talk to. If you don't feel you have it, somebody in your circle, reach out. I will welcome you with open arms. I will step in in any capacity that somebody needs me to. You guys, that is the purpose of these episodes is to let you know that, you know, regardless of where you are at in your process, you're not alone. Somebody has been through it and will gladly hold your hand. And you guys, the most important lesson for all of this, love is love. We all have the right to love and to be loved for who we are. You guys, thank you so much for being a part of this, Kat. Thank it's you again. Pleasure. I'm so glad that I made the connection with you. I you truly too. am. This is uh, a nice uh, change of pace for my Friday evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel very blessed to have made a connection with you and to know you now. I, I feel I am the better for it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Of course. You guys... Again, thank you for joining me. These episodes are truly a blessing in my life to be able to do. But you guys, this work is not easy. And if you want to help support what I do, if you are in any way, shape, or form touched, moved, inspired by any episode that you see me do, help keep me caffeinated. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash the fat girl life. By being a listener sponsor of my podcast, you have access to sponsor only content. You will know about special bonus episodes like these and guests line up before anybody else will. And there's going to be some giveaways coming up. So definitely buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. I hope you all have a wonderful night and I will be here again tomorrow with another bonus episode. So I'll see you guys on the flip side. Have a great night, everybody.